So unfortunately, some of my accounts were hacked and luckily I was able to get the compromised accounts back, but in the process, I was forced to set up a Jagex account for them. This created a unique problem for me as I didn't remember at the time, but I had already added some old accounts to a different Jagex account. So this led me to the problem of how do I easily switch between multiple Jagex accounts without being forced to log out each time I want to change. And after researching this issue, I've noticed that there is one other use case this effect Effects, and that's for people who share a computer with a single user account that can't switch easily between their Jagex accounts. Honestly, it's really not that hard to fix. So let's jump into the solution. But first we need to make sure that we have a local user account or we have the ability to create a local user account. Next, we also wanna verify that we have admin access to make one system change. And lastly, willingness to try and learn something new. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so first up, we're going to create another user. Like I said, if you don't already have one, because we need to verify a couple things before we move on to the further steps. Now, there are a ton of different ways to create a user in Windows, but let's go over just a couple that I think are more easy to do. So first off, we're gonna start with hitting Windows and R on our keyboard. This is going to bring up the run command. Now we can also right click on the start menu, hit run. We can also hit the Windows menu or the Windows start button and just type in run and get it that way. So once this is up, what we need to do is type in net. So N-E-T-P-L-W-I-Z and then go ahead and hit OK or enter on the keyboard. Now this is going to bring up the user's account uh, box and this is how we're going to add another user. So all we have to simply do is go ahead and hit add. Then we want to go down here that says sign in without a Microsoft account, not, re not recommended, but that doesn't matter. We're gonna hit local account because that's what we want. And then here we're gonna make a user name. Now I'm gonna call this test two. I would recommend you make this a very simple username and also don't put spaces because it can just cause a few headaches down the road. Now for the password, I'm just gonna do pass for this. Uh, feel free to make it whatever password you want. Hint for the thing. And the password hint cannot contain anything of the password itself. But once you're done filling out this information, go ahead and hit next. It will say it's going to add user test to. Perfect. We're going to hit finish on here. And then right in this list, you're going to see test two is now added to the user accounts. All right, simply closing this out now, we're gonna see the other way to add in a user account. Now, this way we can do Windows X on the keyboard, and that's going to bring up these Windows Terminal Admin. Now you can open up PowerShell as admin, you can open up CMD as admin. And like I said, to get here, I hit Windows X, which is the same thing as right-clicking on the Start menu. Um, you can also, oops, uh, you can also hit the Start menu and just type in CMD and just simply right click run as admin. Now, once we're in here, you can see I'm in PowerShell. Like I said, doesn't really matter. We want to type in net space user space, and then we're going to type in whatever the username you made or whatever username you want it to be. Now I'm gonna do test three for this one, and then you're gonna hit space, now in this next space is where you're going to actually put the password. Now I'm just gonna put it as pass, but feel free to make it whatever you want. After that, you're going to hit space again and backslash add, and then you're just gonna simply hit enter. Now you should see command completed successfully. If you did not, it might tell you that you need elevated privileges maybe because you did not run it in admin mode, um, or you just don't have the permissions to create new users. So once this has been completed successfully, we want to verify that the users have been created. So all we have to do to do that is type net space user. And here we can hit enter and we can see that test one, test two and test three are all actual users on the system. All right, so now that we got that out of the way and we have our user accounts made, we want to actually log out of our current system and log into that user account. Now. I want you to verify two different things. I want you to launch the Jagex launcher on that account and you will have to sign in to this. Uh, feel free to just sign in. Once you have logged into that Jagex launcher, 
make sure that rune light does not say install because it the rune light needs to be installed on that user itself for this to work so if it hasn't feel free to install it like I said, if you use the Jagex launcher, it will pull down RuneLight's actual website so you can be sure that you do not download it from somewhere that might be malicious. And then you will see, I can flip back over to official client. It'll give a button, something like this, that says install. And that's what we're looking for. Um, after that, once that has been installed and maybe just try to launch the game real quick to make sure you can get in, you can jump out of that account and log back into your main account now. All right, so now that we've verified our Jagex launcher can work on that other account and we're back to our main account, all we're going to do now is hit Windows R again. Uh, it might try to default to whatever you used. Um, maybe that's that net PL whiz. Um, but now we are going to type in S-E-C-P-O-L dot M-S-C and hit OK. Now you don't have to actually launch it from the, the run command. You can type it in the start search. Um, it should actually find it here as well, but this should bring up the local security policy for you. Now, once we have this, we can go ahead and just kind of make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Uh, expand that out. We want to find local policy, hit the drop down arrow. Then we're gonna find user rights assignment. Now it's going to bring up a whole list of policies and the policy that we're looking for is log on as batch job. Now, once we find that we can just double click and it should bring up log on as batch job properties. Now, perfect. What we want to do is hit add user or group. And then we are going to simply type in the username that we had just previously created. Or if you already had a local user, use that one, type in the name then hit check names. This will automatically put the uh, location for that user in for you. So after that does that, you can go ahead and hit OK. You should see it added to the list and we want to hit apply. Now what this policy does is actually allow you to launch software without having to be logged into that user specifically. So we don't have to always be logged into that user to run the Jagex launcher with a different Jagex account, which is super handy. Now, once you have done that, like I said, you're free to exit out of that. Now we are super close to being done here, but one final thing we need to do is find the location of the launcher and create a small batch file for it to run. So first find your Jagex launcher. You can see mine here is on the desktop and it is a shortcut, but that totally works right click and hit properties. Now it will bring up the properties box and the one we want to find is target. Now, if you don't see that, you can go in your file explorer and just find wherever you put and install the executable file. But this is the most simple way to find this. And all we have to do is hit copy, which is perfect. Next, we are going to open up notepad. We can go ahead and get rid of that. And we can type in here, this is where we're going to create our batch file. We're going to type in run as backslash user colon, and then we're going to put in our username here. So we made test two as our user, and then I'm going to simply add a space and then paste. And I needed to put this entire path in quotes. So it should look exactly like this. All right, so now that we have the command put in here, we need to save as, so we'll go up here and hit file, save as. We want to save as type. We wanna change this first before we add a name. So we're gonna go all files and we're gonna make sure we're on the desktop. And then we're gonna do run as user two. And then you're gonna to wanna to put a period and then dot BAT to whatever name you wanna call this. So. You could make it whatever you want, but just make sure you put that .bat, which will convert this into a batch file for you. Hit uh, save, and you're gonna see it show up on your desktop. All right, so now that we have the batch file on our uh, desktop, we are pretty much ready to go here. So what we can do is we'll launch the Jagex launcher on our main one, and we can see that we have that bond life. That is my normal main account that I use. Um, and I have just a list of characters under this Jagex account. 
uh, this we want to switch over. So we have to hit close. And once we hit close, the thing we need to make sure we do now is go down here to the taskbar settings. You need to find the Jagex launcher and hit exit. Now I will show you what it does if you don't do that. So we can go ahead and run our batch file. I'm gonna use mine. It's going to prompt you for that username that you created. Now it's going to launch and we can see now I am under a different Jagex account, which is perfect. Now I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't exit out. So say we just exit out of here and then we wanna go back to our other Jagex account we try to open up Jagex Launcher. We're still at that batch file user, uh, whatever Jagex account you have attached to that one, and it has not switched. So you, like I said before, you need to hit close, go down here, and actually exit the Jagex Launcher. Now you can go into the task manager and find it. I just find it easier to go to the taskbar and just simply hit exit. And that's really it, guys. That's how you can just switch between different Jagex accounts pretty easily on one user account. Now there's one more thing that we can do here and it is to make the icon look a little bit more pretty. Now, you see these little gear icons, they're not the prettiest. We want maybe like something fancier. Maybe we have an icon we wanna use. So we can actually throw this batch file into a different folder, but once you do that, go right click and hit send to and create shortcut. Now we can hit right click and hit properties. And then under the shortcut tab, you will actually see change icon. Now it might throw this error, don't worry, just hit okay. And then you can navigate to your icon that you wanna use. Now I don't have any currently, but maybe I wanna use the tree. So we'll just click that, hit okay and hit apply and okay and there you go it's as simple as that we have changed the icon now um we can rename it to you know user 2 jagex account if we want as well all right so hopefully this helps some of you out there with this problem i know it's not a common problem but i wanted to share my solution with you also if you'd like to see in the future me figure out a solution to have the jagex launcher always close every time you're done let me know in the comments below and as always i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one